Okay, to begin with, I'd like to remind you that when you're ever judging bars, to keep your bar chart handy, not only to see what the range of deductions are for the particular skill that you're looking at, but also so you can look at the, the 10, 20, 30 degree angle marks to remind yourself of um, exactly what they look like, and then to look up at the bars and try to uh, transpose that angle up there so that you know where your 10, 20, 30 degree marks will be. And I do this throughout the meet. Um, as things go along, I feel like I um, need to redo that just to make sure I'm still on the same page. So a good idea always to have that chart with you and review your angles from time to time. So if we have a straight body line, we determine the line from the hand through the midpoint of the lowest body part to establish your cast angle. That's nice when you have a nice straight line, no complication, easy to see. It adds a complication when you have angles. So if we have a shoulder angle, we take our line from the shoulder through the midpoint of the lowest body part. The angle of completion is determined when the hips are extended and or the legs are joined. So with the straight body cast, the hips are extended throughout. You can see where she ends. With a straddle cast, bent hip, uh, once her feet get together, that's when we are going to measure the angle. In this case, the first one is in the B range of 16 degrees with an 05 deduction. If you'll notice this one with the bent hip, she does have a straight shoulder line, so we go from the hand. But I just have to make a note here that uh, if I don't have a good side view uh, on the slide that I'm showing you, it's a kind of a skewed angle that I'm giving you. And it, I, I really think that this uh, piked one is probably not within the 20 degrees. But um, take that with a grain of salt that if I don't have a good example with a good side view, that they might not be exactly accurate and your own brain will establish uh, probably a better concept of what it should be than what I can just draw on a flat two-dimensional screen. If the hips are extended but the legs are not joined at the peak of the cast, we take up to two tenths for leg separation. Now here's an example of what that actually means. Bent hip straddle cast, her hips are extended. She is in the B range. But by the time she gets her feet together, she is no longer in the B range. So we're going to take up to two tenths. And in this case, she has more than shoulder width uh, leg separation. So she gets a two tenth deduction. She is within 13 degrees, which means she gets the B, but it's an 05 deduction. She would have um, lost the B but once she got her feet together, if we had gone from that angle. But remember, that is not where we take it. So I didn't even show you another picture of that so that you don't <laughs> implant the wrong picture in your mind. And of course, we know that there are cast deductions exceptions. They are not applied prior to a squat, stoop, or straddle on the low bar, uh, whether or not she does a back sole circle out of it. But if she just does a hip lift, and no backward swing of the legs, there is a 0.05 deduction, and that does happen occasionally. I'd like to make note that the cast deductions are applied to cast prior to toe shoots and underswing type dismounts. You don't know necessarily what she's going to do after the cast. When you see the skill that she follows it with, you might have to go back and either apply the up to 3 tenth cast angle deduction or you might need to give it back in case you were anticipating that she was trying to cast a handstand. Here are a few examples. Here's the, the cast squat on. She's got a little back swing. She jumps on. She's not expected to do any more than that. Now this one. Straight body cast above horizontal. Now you might want to jump on that one and expect a, a handstand when she uses that technique. But when you see her do a soul circle, jump to the high out of it, you have to recognize that that was a good technique no deduction for that skill. But here we're giving a good attempt trying to get that straddle or get that handstand position before a toe shoot. And now on the spinal one, she is clearly not getting a cast angle out of it. You might have expected her just to do a, a stoop on, but when she does the toe shoot out of it, that's when you need to remember to go back 
and take that angle deduction. There are difficulties in determining cast angles. For one thing, the angle or vantage point that you are sitting at when you're judging. When I do a uh, podium meet and I'm sitting down below looking straight up into the lights, uh, it's a real strange position to be looking at. You might think that how on earth are you going to be able to determine angles from that point of view. As it turns out, you do acclimate to the position you're in. And I always like to get there early enough and watch training or warm-ups to make sure that I'm looking at that angle up in, up in the sky like that and being able to establish where my lines for my angles are actually going to fall so that it doesn't take me two or three routines into the meet before I finally get my bearings and start judging accurately. So get accustomed to the position you're in before the meet starts. And then there's the issue of what the eye can actually capture as the peak frame of the cast. Uh, you see her moving up through a range and then that very top frame that she hits her highest point may not be what you see. You then catch her going back down through the same range that she went up. Your eye is more likely to pick up on an angle in there someplace, somewhere not quite at the peak. But you'll have coaches come up to you with their iPhones and trying to say, hey, look at, uh, she actually had a B cast and you didn't give her credit. And of course, we can't go back and review that, but they are able to capture that last frame on their phone and we may not be able to do that. But this kind of practice, uh, watching cast angles in regular speed and slow motion, stop action, uh, review the angles, helps you to become better at it so that you, you can get a, a better idea of where that angle actually should be. But that should not excuse the coaches and athletes from trying to present an element that has no room for error, or that they can, for sure, we can recognize without a doubt that it has met the requirements. So it's, and the onus is on both us and on the athletes and coaches to try to do our, the best job that we can. And then determining the midpoint of the lowest body part can be an issue. When we have multiple moving body angles and shapes to consider, and the point at which all of the criteria of that definition is finally met, and all the planets come into alignment, and boom, we have a split second to decide, yep, that's where I'm going to draw my line for my angle of completion. It's not necessarily an easy task, and the more angles and body parts, uh, moving parts, the more difficult it becomes. I do not think this is a perfect working definition. The line from the hands or shoulders, if there is a shoulder angle, through the midpoint of the lowest body part at the peak of the cast when the hips are extended and or the legs are joined. For instance, here is a slide where the athlete is clearly in a balanced handstand. However, she's got her head is out, her ribs are out, her feet are out. All of that coming into play. Using our definition, we draw that line through her chest angle, which she's still in a handstand, but she gets an 05 deduction for being in the 10 to 20 degree range. She's also going to get her body position errors deducted as well. So you may think it's double deducting, but we needed a definition that we could work with. Say she just does a, a, a low cast in her chest. She has a shoulder angle and her chest is below her shoulders and she has a, a severe back arch and her feet are up above 45 degrees. When you see that type of a body shape, uh, we don't want to be rewarding that. Instead, we'd, we want to reward good technique where they can do a straight body cast and get all their body parts into alignment at a, a high angle position. So we go through that lowest chest position in those cases. We are going to watch 10 cast examples. The first viewing is going to be in regular speed, and you should script the little sequence and then record your angle deduction and the value part that you awarded. That is, did you give it a B or did you not? But you do not have to record execution deductions. We are going to focus in on angles, let the execution deductions alone, and that should make our job a little easier. We will have approximately like four seconds between the, the regular speed showing and the slow motion viewing where I will actually stop it with a still frame and draw in the angles superimposed over the picture and put the degrees with the answer in for you. So here we go.
Okay, I'm ready to move into the next skill, and that will be close bar circles, which are clear hips, toe ons, and stalders. So we have a different chart for that. The important thing here is that we still have the uh, 0 to 10, no deduction, 10 to 20 degrees. We take that 05 deduction and still give it the value part, which is a C. But we have this uh, free range in here, 20 to 45 degrees, where we do not take a deduction for the angle, but we bring it down to a B value part. Then beyond that, the clear hips get all the way up to a 4 tenth deduction when they're below horizontal, and uh, toans and stalters are in that 2 tenth range. They don't go down as low as the clear hips. But we're dealing mainly with level 10s here, so we expect their handstands to be in the 20 degree range and their angle coming out of their circle. If they're in the 20 to 45 and they're getting a B without an angle deduction, uh, that's what we're looking at. I'm not expecting you to uh, deal with what we see in the level 6 and 7s where they're below horizontal and multiple body position errors. So that should keep it a little easier. We're going to see eight close bar circles, and you are to script the sequence and record your angle deduction and the value part that you award it. Okay, moving on. Uh, the next skill we are going to look at, at our turns in handstands. And so if you'll notice that we have now given them the entire 20 degrees range with no deduction. We've taken away the 10 to 20 05 and moved that 05 into the 20 to 30 degree range with the 05 to 1 tenth deduction. This applies both to half and full turns in handstand. We're going to look at half turns right now. Now that we're doing a turn, the angle of completion will be determined when the second hand re-grasps the bar. We're going to see eight clips. Three will have two turns. And we are to record the script, the, the little sequence, record the angle deduction only. 
All the elements retain C value part because they are half turns. Okay, I'd like to make a few comments about the half turns on low bar. If they do a, a, a late turn, the initiation is, uh, say, on the descent side of the bar, uh, they're going to accumulate uh, a lot more deductions than that three-tenths for a late turn. They need to get their hand on the bar before we, we take the angle, and if they're already piking to clear the floor, 
we're going down through their foot, which is the lowest body part for three tenths, and they may be in enough trouble that they're going to actually have to tuck their legs and get almost uh, maybe another three tenth deduction for the bent legs, and then very likely they also will hit the floor, which is another three tenth deduction. That, in addition to uh, body position errors, uh, arch, bent arms, head out, legs apart, they can easily accumulate more than 1.0 in deductions on a low bar handstand pirouette. You don't see that so often maybe at the higher levels but at uh, level 8 where they're using that uh, low bar handstand pirouette for their uh, special requirement for a B turn or release. That's where you're going to get that deduction and you need to be prepared for it because 333 uh, nine tenths can add up in a in a hurry, probably faster than you can write. So, you just have to know what's coming. Okay, we're going to move into the giant swings with a full turn. They have that same angle deductions as the half turns. We talked about that. We're going to see four video clips of giant fulls. You only have to record the angle deduction because they are all worth a D. Okay, so we are now going to move into the close bar circles with half turns. Uh, I'd like to remind you that the clear hip half, toe on half, and stalder half to a reverse grip, L grip, or mixed L are now going to be credited as Ds. This is new in the current code of points. But also there has been no change in the cast handstand pirouette or the giant half into a reverse L grip or mixed L grip. Um, it's just the close bar circles that have been upgraded to the D's. And also note that the forward close bar circles with half turns have not been upgraded. So this first one is a uh, Weiler uh, with a half turn. That That's a D, it's always been a D, no change. The front toe on half and the front stalder half remain a C at this time. I don't know if they're thinking about changing that or not. We're going to see seven video clips of uh, close bar circles with half turns. Uh, you need to record uh, the angle deductions and the value part.
Okay, so our next skill grouping is going to be short side half turns. And by that I mean skills that swing up one side, do a half turn and come back down the same direction they came from. There is an issue with these. All the elements that have these short sided turns seem to have a different set of rules to follow. There's no consistency from uh, one skill to the other and it can have significant impact on the scores that we give based on the rules that are applied. Currently, uh, the Tech Committee is reviewing this and hopefully they'll come up with more consistent rules for us to follow and make it a little more fair for the gymnasts, I think. Right now, you'll find all of these on page 13 in your code under, under bars, where they list all the different skills and how you deal with whether to give them credit or not. So uh, the value part is determined by the highest point of the upswing achieved. The angle of completion of the turn determines the late turn deduction, if applicable. And in these cases, I'm saying that it's those that actually get up into the C range are the ones that we're going to have to deal with, whether they have a, a late turn deduction that is applied. For instance, if we do a giant swing forward that reaches 20 degrees and Maybe she was expecting to go over the bar, but she stalled out and then did a half turn on the way down and ended up with the at 25 degree completion of the turn. Uh, she would be in the 05 to 1 10th range for a deduction for a late turn, but she would still get the C because that upswing got up there. Typically on these swing turns, they're turning on the upswing and so getting a late turn isn't that much of an issue. By far, the giant half turn is the most popular of the short side skills that we'll, we'll be dealing with, and giant half is an important skill. It has significant impact on the values of their uh, routines at the different levels. I've scripted this with that arrow going back over the top of the giant half. Uh, you don't have to do that, but that you can use something like that just to indicate to yourself the direction of the routine in case you get confused on trying to recreate uh, a routine. The turn is completed within 20 degrees of vertical. There is no angle deduction, even though she never even reached vertical. In my mind, I would think she should get the 05 for being 10 to 20 out, just like a cast, but it's not. It's the turning deductions like we do on regular uh, giant swing half turns that is applied here, even if she goes down on the short side. We added a B a number of years ago. It used to not be there. If it was a C, we gave credit. If it wasn't, it was an A. So uh, we've added element 4201 with a 21 to 44 degree range from vertical. Now you would think it should be 45, but the fact is we just inserted this new skill within the old rule that talked about a 45 degree angle for getting an A. The critical impact on of whether you give this an, a C or a B is very important. I mean, if you're just between your 20 and 21 degrees, you need to keep a sharp eye because it has a huge effect on a start value of like a 11 or level 8 or 9 when they're looking for a B turn, or a level 10 that's looking for a C turn, or level 9 and 10 for whether it is a C that you can use for connection value. So uh, your decision is important, so you want to be sharp on this one. So then here is that swing finishes 45 degrees to horizontal. Uh, that is an A element for 101. We're not going to deal with a, a turn angle on that. We're just going to give it an A. If she doesn't even get to horizontal, we are not even going to give it a value part, even if she finishes the turn and we will apply up to one-tenth for insufficient amplitude of the forward swing. Now in the case of a clear hip and a soul circle half turn, uh, they are separate skills in the book, but I'm, I'm bunching them together here because of the next slide. If they reach within 20 degrees, there's no angle deduction, they get the C. However, if they do not, we are calling it an underswing with a half turn, either with the feet on the bar or clear underswing. Number 3102, which is an A element that is already in the book. Uh, no deduction for turn angle because it's just considered an underswing with a half turn. If you will note here, we did not list a B for a 21 to 45 degree 
uh, clear hip half or toe on half. This is where it really is significant. It impacts the level 8 and 9 special requirements of a B turn or in the case of the level 8s that group 367B. Um, if they didn't get the C, they're not going to get a B because it's not listed, which means they lose 5 tenths special requirement. Now the Stalder half, again, it's a C if it's within the 20 degree range. There is no B or anything else listed in the book. So from 21 degrees and lower, it's not in the code. Uh, the directive they give us is uh, to give it the value of the root skill. But uh, what is the root skill of a Stalter that never makes it over the top of the bar? Uh, I assume they mean like a stalter to a clear support that did go over the bar but didn't make the 20 degrees and so they're going to give it a B. So that's what we're going to do with it here until we get further instruction of what to call this skill. The cast handstand half turn. Uh, 20 degrees within vertical, no angle deduction. If they don't make it to 20 degrees, we have included an A level skill for a cast half turn that gets 21 to 45 degrees from vertical. But in this case, we're going to apply the cast angle deduction, not the turn angle deduction. So you're probably accustomed to that when you see a cast that doesn't make it to vertical, you're going to automatically take a cast deduction. Well, in this case, we don't see this kind of a skill very often. Uh, it's, it's kind of hard to do if you had to intend to do it. Maybe if you're on the high bar facing the low bar and you cast half turn and do a straddle back over the low bar, but that doesn't give you time to really set up to prepare to do a reverse tap to get over the bar. And I certainly don't expect you to think you're going to get all the way up to the top of the bar on a front giant swing out of a, a late turn like that. So we don't see it too often. I think they would be expecting to try to reach the C and it would only happen if they uh, they were short. And there is no value part if the cast is greater than 45 degrees from vertical even if they complete the half turn. And we do take the cast angle deductions again even though it is a part of no value. And, and we're accustomed to taking casts with no value. Finally we have the front giant half turn. It is a C. If it is within 20 degrees of vertical we take no angle deduction if it stays within 20. However, there is no value part for anything 21 degrees or greater from vertical. That means part of no value without any angle deduction. So we're going to see six video clips. One of them will have two turns all you need to do is uh, record the value part where we don't have to really deal with late turning deductions because uh, they're turning on the way up in the most cases for the giant halves.
Okay, if you notice on those last two, I also showed you the angle of turn completion, just to illustrate that uh, when they're turning on the downswing that they'll have a, a bigger angle than the angle that they achieved on the upswing. In this case, however, uh, since there are only A and B elements, we are not applying angle of turn deductions, but I just wanted to show you what I mean by uh, the separation between the, the upswing and the completion of the turn that we were talking about in the beginning of this section.